everything is fast. Oh my gosh, it's quick. It's quick. This helps so much. All right, I gotta do one more. I can't stop, guys. I can't stop hitting the VVTL. I'm gonna do a little nice merge and off we go. YouTube, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Mitch. If you're new here, subscribe, hit the like button. If you're not new here, uh, hit the subscribe button because maybe you haven't subscribed and hit the like button always. Hey, today what we're gonna be doing is I'm gonna show you guys how to install a cold air intake to increase horsepower on your Toyota Celica GT or GTS from the year 2000 to like 2005 or six. So I'm gonna show you how it. I got from my website. I did an unboxing video recently. This is gonna be the how-to video. Of course, we're gonna go do some rips. And of course we're gonna go do some full pulls and VVTLI and get that new sound of the induction noise. Uh, with, a little, with the exhaust that I have on there, the Apexy exhaust, and now this cold air intake, this thing's gonna feel so much more fun and peppy. Um, I have the Celica outside, it's ready to go, but I'm gonna show you kind of the stuff that we're gonna put on today and then we'll go out to the Celica and I'm gonna do a step-by-step -step and show you guys how to install it, how to increase horsepower on your Toyota Celica GTS. And then um, tomorrow's video, we'll go back into the five things that I hate about that Nissan GTR. But today, it's Merry Christmas. Everyone wants uh, some Celica content, so here we go. So you're gonna want everything that comes in the uh, cold air intake from my website. Oof, wrinkled black, let's go. That thing is beautiful. Um, you're gonna want that. Everything kind of assembled like this. I did that in my unboxing video. Um, you'll want that. Of course, you're gonna want some kind of caffeine, so we're gonna go with some water here, some Monster Zero. This thing is like water for me. A little bit of energy. You're gonna want everything that comes in the kit. Um, you're probably gonna want an eight millimeter. You can also do the uh, flathead or you can do the eight millimeter. You're gonna want a 10 millimeter and then you're also probably gonna want a Phillips head and uh, that's pretty much all you need. So what we're first gonna do is go out to, we'll drink some caffeine for the boys and then we'll go out to the car and uh, start removing the OEM. For the boys. <sighs> Happy holidays, Merry Christmas. Now let's go ahead and jump over to the uh, Toyota Celica GTS. First thing that you want to do is pop the hood, just like that, little latch. The next thing you want to do is look at your beautiful engine bay. Look how clean this thing is. Look at the runners of that 2ZZ. Wow, beautiful. So my engine bay looks really good. I hope yours does, yours does as well. Um, the first thing we're trying to get do, do is get rid of this whole air box. So I'm going to show you guys how to do it. Um, we got a perfect amount of time. It's not going to take you too much time. Set about about an hour to do this, 45 minutes to an hour. So let's go ahead and start doing it. So these are actually 10 millimeters right here that are holding on a lot of the um, clamps on here. If you'd like, you can do a flat uh, Phillips head. That's why I said to get the Phillips head. You can do that. Or you can do um, a kind of like an extractor drill, which is what I'm doing. But the first thing that I have to do is actually remove the mass airflow sensor. So what you do is you just pull on this. It'll pop off, slide off. Use two, 10 milli or two Phillips heads and we'll remove the mass airflow sensor. All right, just like that, the two Phillips heads unhook the math, pull the mass airflow sensor out. Keep, this is very important, hold this, keep onto this. You need this for the car. Um, and then kind of just set, set the wire aside. Uh, there is a little plug-in that it pops into here. You can tug on this and it'll pull it. Once you've got the mass airflow sensor out, what I like to do is on the original one, if you just pull this breather hose out from the ECU, just pull on it this way and pull out, it'll come out. It might be a little dirty, uh, but it should come right out from the ECU. Um, and we're gonna set that aside. All right, at this point, you're gonna wanna take your 10 millimeter or your Phillips head, either one. And you're gonna remove this little uh, hose clamp. So I just use that, it came off really quick. And while you're doing it, you might as well wanna do the o OEM one over here as well. Okay, so now once you've done those and they're loose, there are three clips. A clip here, a clip right here, right down in here, and then a clip on the back side. All you have to do is push on these, the opposite way of what they're in, and then it should release the, the top of the, um, the top of the air box. That, I'm gonna wiggle on this. And then the top of the, the main part of the air box should come off. There we go. And then um, the back of these little hose, there, there's a little uh, push pin on the back of this right here, and it's connecting the, um, the uh, it's connecting the vacuum lines on the back here, so we'll go ahead and push on that and pull it out. Okay, and then on the back of this, the top of the um, air box, you kind of just pull out. There are two lines that go into it, two vacuum lines right here that go into it, and all you do is pull out on it. Um, and then we're gonna set this aside. So it's another piece of plastic that we can remove. 
Okay, and then now this should come out again. You did Lefty Lucy on these two. So the OEM kind of rubbery, worn out, gross pipe. We can remove this. And then we're gonna kind of leave this as is right here. One of the things that I noticed is that there, there's a little clip down here, it's white. I don't remember this one being on here, but it was kind of holding that hose clamp in. So that's kind of interesting. I, I don't remember that one being on my other ones. Um, maybe that's a 2004 thing that they did. So um, now what we're trying to do is we're gonna remove the bottom of the air box. That's what we're trying to get to, remove the air box. Here's the filter, actually looks really good. Um, this car was always serviced at Toyota actually by the dealership, um, but we can set this aside. Once that you have the uh, filter off, the pipe off, the mass airflow sensor, and then this little thing just, you can see right here, this little metal thing just slides off. You're gonna wanna remove this cute little plastic trim here. It's so funny. Um, and my car actually had all the OEM clips on there. To remove the OEM clip, you just push on the middle and it pops up. Now we're gonna wanna remove this 10 millimeter right here. You guys see this 10 millimeter? And there's another 10 millimeter right here. So let's grab the drill. Well, I gotta break it loose now. We gotta use some muscle. Right now, once we broke it loose, we should be able to use the drill. Yeah, and I remember this being a huge bolt. Yeah, it's a huge bolt. There's one. We'll set that aside again. And then we'll come down to the one down here. You might be able to reach this or not. You might not. We'll just see. There's a little plastic uh, fuse box. Yeah, so I'm gonna use my um, little wrench here and break it loose. There we go. And then I'll go back in with the drill. All right, there we go. I did want to say there is, there is no other, it's just those two, the 10 and 10 here. There's nothing else that holds us in. Um, this right here is like a drain, I think a drain part of it. Um, I don't remember, or this is where it sits and mounts. And then there are two little holes usually in the bottom of these. So if there's air, if the water gets in it, it drains. Um, but everything else now it should be able to just come out. There's gonna be some hoses on the back of this. And the way that you can actually do it is just, there's, you can just unclip them. So that's what I'm gonna do right now. And then I'll, I'll, screw, unscrew, I'll show you the back of it and unscrew it in a second. I might do a write up how to on this, but I should uh, post some pictures. So this is the back side of the of the uh, stock box right here for the 2004 uh, there's this little funny flapper thing stupid I, I would never I think it's the dumbest thing ever um, it was because the 04 came with these like em extra emissions research that has this little um, uh, it comes off the header and goes back into this it's for emissions extra emissions on this car that being said there's this little thing right here that controls the flapper and it runs into the bottom of this and then all that also runs across the vacuum line all the way over to that thing. Um, you're probably not gonna have this as if you have an older uh, Celica, anything be before the year, I think 2003. So um, the next thing that you wanna do is you, do, you are gonna wanna keep this bad boy um, and then you are gonna keep this bad boy but what we're gonna do is just remove this little string right, or this plug to this plug right here, this one, and this will go straight into the one that the vacuum line that goes across. Okay, the stock box is officially gone. You're done with it. Um, it's all over the side. Everything's moved out very easy, not hard at all. Um, so once the stock box is moved like this, I do recommend removing this bad boy right here, this little breather hose that goes into here. Um, you don't have to, but I'm going to show you guys why. Uh, that being said, you can actually see your transmission um, gear selector, kind of cool, the little um, shift actuator right here. Here's gonna be that mass airflow sensor. And then everything I actually went and plugged back in so that you don't get confused. And I would do the same for you. Again, this is very easy. This this is like, a, I think the, the uh, charcoal line or the, the goes in the gas tank. That one you just plug back in right there. This is another vacuum line um, and you just plug this vacuum line back in. And then once you have this back in like that, that's fine. It looks just like that. This actually runs into the intake manifold and runs a vacuum line, I guess, over to that, um, that funny little, I can't think what it is, but the emission thing that they did for the 2004 and above. So we're gonna pull this out, and then after I pull this out, we're actually gonna wipe all this down and get it nice clean. I always try to you know, have your engine bay pretty look. Okay, now that we did a little house cleaning, it looks a lot nicer, cleaner in there. Um, we are gonna move on. So if you guys have any questions, comment down below, I'll help you. But we're gonna move on. By how are we gonna move on? We're gonna go grab the cold air intake, the whole induction system, and set it right in here. Again, this is not very Okay, so we've wiggled the uh, Mitchroy.com wrinkle black cold air intake on. 
Before you mount this, you're gonna wanna mount the uh, OEM mass air flow sensor. So make sure you put that back on. This is how it looks. You're gonna bolt that back on. You're gonna wanna plug it in. It's gonna sit up against this. Then once you get those on, you do, oh, and by the way, as you wiggle it on, you leave the cold air or the intake, the Canon intake filter on the side, leave it on the side. Uh, this should be already plugged in like that right there. You guys see that, that vacuum line? And then you're gonna wiggle it all the way down underneath here and it's gonna come out right there. You guys see that? There's a little push hole right there and you just wiggle it through and it'll sit up where that fog light is and it'll get some nice cold fresh air down here. Um, you don't have to have the filter on. You can put the filter on afterwards and I'll show you guys how to slide it on. Okay, so we've mounted the mass air flow sensor. It's on there. We plugged it back in, do that. Then you take, these are eight millimeters or flathead. So I, I showed you guys you can use the Phillips head or the flathead or an eight millimeter. You tighten this one that goes right into the throttle body. You tighten this one that goes into the uh, cold air intake. Then you remove a Phillips head on the back of the vacuum line. Um, and you're gonna mount this vacuum line right up to here. This black, black extended welded on uh, wrinkled black bracket. And then you use the same OEM uh, Phillips head to tighten it back. Just look how OEM that looks. That looks better than OEM right there. Um, one of the things that you might notice that I've done is I've actually deleted this little release valve EVAP service system. I just, it's, if you want to test it, I just delete it. It's ugly, it's green. They all come with them, even the MR2. It's just, I just deleted it. All you gotta do is pull on this one, pull this one, and then it, instead of having this little connector split in here, you just run that line right into it. And look how good that looks. So factory, so OEM, all black and um, black and silver, just like my car, which, oh, that looks amazing. It's gonna look so good when I pop open the engine bay. The pipe looks huge, it looks really good. Um, everything's kind of mounted up here. So let's go ahead and I'm gonna show you the next. All right, so once you have the top done, this is how it's gonna look underneath here. So right in this wheel well, it's tucked up there, nice cold, fresh air, increases horsepower, 10 horsepower, and it's tucked right in there. You guys see a little tuck? And then um, once you have it up there, you can just align the clamp, the hose clamp, the way you want it to sit. And then I'm gonna use um, my drill with the, a long extender with an eight millimeter and then just drill it on and tighten it up. All right, so we're all done installing. Oh my goodness, is that thing beautiful. That looks so good. I love the wrinkle black. I love how it kind of connects with the VVTLI. I think that looks so good. It really fits kind of the whole theme of my car, which is the silver and, um, or thun, you know, gun, gun metal or whatever you call it, thundercloud, silver, and then the black accents. As you guys can kind of see, it even goes with my wheels, the side markers, the headlights, and then look how perfect that goes right into that intake. So um, I reinstalled everything. I put the OEM little seal back in right here, all the plastics. Um, I definitely recommend cleaning up your engine bay when you go to do this to make it look nice and pretty. The only thing that um, really is holding the thing in place that you really need to mount with is there's the, uh, down below where the intake is, um, where it tucks up underneath there, that fender well is pushing up on it and it'll hold it in place. It's not, look at this. It is not gonna go anywhere. In addition to holding that in place, the um, hose clamp is holding it in place. Now the kit does come with some mounting hardware. On the GT, you're probably gonna wanna use that mounting hardware, but on the GTS, this is perfect. It's held in place. This looks so OEM in my opinion. I think that looks so good. The mass airflow sensor is hidden back there, plugged in, really, really good. Everything looks good. If you have any questions, comment down below, I'll help you. Uh, but this is the final result of when you get it plugged all in and complete installed. Let's go over to the, I'll go ahead and start the car up um, and make sure it doesn't throw any check engine lights. If you want the uh, TRD badge, swing by mrray.com as well. So let's go ahead and kick it over. We're gonna turn it on. Boom, perfect. Look at that, amazing. No check engine lights, we are good to go. Um, we do need to let the 2ZZ warm up. Um, but wow, that's perfect. That is how you're gonna, you, you install it. You're gonna get more horsepower out of this. Um, let's go ahead and listen to how it sounds on the outside. And then um, we're gonna, of course, go for some full throttle drive. I did wanna give you guys just a little taste. Listen to how much in induction noise this makes. Oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh my gosh, that sounds so good. Yeah. I love that. That right there is worth the whole thing right there. 
All right, looking and sounding good. Everything is good, ready to go. So let's go ahead and get in the car. Uh, we'll go for some drives and uh, cannot wait to kind of wrap up the whole video. But this is a very easy install. Um, SwingbyMitchellRay.com if you want one of these. If you have any questions, comment down below. I'll help you. This is how you gain 10 horsepower on your 2ZZ or your even your GT. Um, now on the GT, I never got it dynoed. I don't know how much it increases the horsepower. But from my stock box um, to this intake, uh, on my two dyno differences, it gained 10 wheel horsepower. Pretty amazing. Also, if you want this shift setup, this is at super class. And then I'm also shipping you guys' orders out from missionary.com right now. Swing by missionary.com, grab one, and then finishing off that caffeine. Let's go. All right, guys, you have to listen to this. Listen to this induction noise. Oh my gosh. It's so good. It's so throaty. I love that. That makes it all worth it right there. That's so, so good. Here, listen to it again. This is insane. Right, right here, mid-range. Oh, yeah! You can see it picks up right there a lot more. That's exactly what you need on the, the, the Celica. That mid-range is so slow. Oh my gosh, it's definitely fixed it. Wow, that sounds so, so, so good. Okay, just like that, we finished the install and it sounds so good. Oh my gosh, mmm, sounds so good. No check engine light, that's how you do it. You plug everything back in just the way it was. The ECU will love it. Now, you're never really gonna make true more horsepower unless you get um, a uh, an ECU and tune that ECU. Then you can get real, real, real big horsepower. This will give you dyno proven wheel gain horsepower, 10. So the ECU will allow it to suck more air in and then it'll allow more air to flow through the 2ZZ or your uh, 1ZZ and it'll create more horsepower. You'll get more peppy engine and the ECU, ECU will learn and adapt to it and create more horsepower. It's amazing, I love this thing. Um, and also it looks absolutely phenomenal. Um, I am freezing out here, so I'm not gonna spend too much time as you guys can see it's all ice over the uh, Celica GTS Tsunami. This is like one of one of a time how beautiful this is. Like this will never be recreated. I love how amazing this car looks. This is so good. The engine bay I absolutely just fell in love with. That looks that looks better, 10 times better than OEM. I've never seen a 2ZZ look this good in my opinion. That is so good looking. I absolutely love it. It looks so fast. Oh, perfect. It looks OEM. There's no check engine lights, so this is beautiful. So what you guys all want to hear is some induction noise, and then we'll go on the highway and hit some VVTLI, some VVTLI, some lift. Um, but let's grab that induction noise right now, and you guys will love the sound of it. So another thing is is that uh, we're going for a drive now. The car is at a stoplight and it's perfectly in idle. It sits right at like the 900,000 mark. Perfect. So there is no issue with the idle as well. It's not hesitating or thinking. Uh, again, I've probably driven it, I don't know, five miles, something like that. Uh, no check engine light. It should not throw a check engine light. If it does, read the code and I can help you with it. Um, you might have unplugged something that you should have unplugged or plugged it in back, back in wrong, but I'm here to help you. Um, absolutely love the induction noise on this thing. Let's go ahead and rip it on the highway right now. All right, so let's go ahead and rip it. Oh my gosh, did you see? Oh my gosh. That is unreal. Can you hear that difference? That is so good. That makes the 2ZZ sound so beefy. Oh my gosh. I cannot recommend this intake enough. It is the best thing, it, it is the best thing in the world. That is crazy. That, oh wow, I love it, I love it. I'm speechless right now, guys. Guys, I'm actually in shock. I forgot how much this cold air intake works. This creates so much more horsepower. Did you watch that mid-range? It like absolutely just picked the other thing about the wrinkle black versus getting like a, an aluminum color, the wrinkle black actually keeps the air intake temperatures cooler. 
So that's a really big plus as well. So everything about it. Um, we're gonna do a couple more polls, but this is gonna be it for me. Happy happy Christmas, Merry Christmas, guys. Make sure to swing by missionary.com, grab these. Um, they're gonna be there. You're gonna get a K&N uh, intake with it, the uh, filter, you're gonna get the wrinkle black. It's one of my favorite products. Um, if you can't afford the intake right now, grab a shifter kit or grab a TRD badge or a microfiber. Um, again, happy holidays, guys. I hope you enjoyed this. More solid content to come. Holy smokes, this thing is fast now.